for your invitation. Today, I would like to share with you a belief and a concern. A belief. Human capital will be the key asset of the 21st century. A concern. It is still too often considered as an adjustment variable. Allow me to assure you, in the light of ongoing disruptions, the only way to limit uncertainty is to have faith in humanity. It is a faith I deeply share. But faith has to be anchored in action. All of us are concerned. We need to give men and women the means to accompany changes and see them as opportunities for a future development. Since 2007, we have been stuck in a state of crisis because we refuse to acknowledge that the world has changed. This, however, is not fate. We need to do something about it. The crisis will not be resolved by providence, by magical forces. Only men and women have the ability to do this. The solution is to help them regain trust in their ability to shape their future and to empower them with the means to do so. My family is a striking example of how individuals can implement a game-changing vision. The Rothschilds are a family of entrepreneurs. Each generation has taken risks and pursued projects that have helped shape the world. For instance, by supporting railway constructions in Europe during the first industrial revolution, despite widespread concerns and opposition. At that time, no one knew <coughs> how this type of infrastructure would change the world, nor what competencies would be needed. This digital revolution is the modern day equivalent of the 19th century industrial revolution. It is radically changing both our work life and our personal lives. How is it possible that productivity is decreasing when so many innovations help us save time? In fact, Productivity is decreasing because there's not enough human capital involved in key decision-making processes. We are all the fundamental drivers of growth. This revolution is by no means changing the fact that companies need skills. The need for qualified people per age group is increasing, and so is the cost of academic failure. But the stake is not just about college years. Within the existing workforce, people also require more training. Men and women require access to training in order to both be able to cope with change and to become vectors of innovation themselves. Providing the broader number with the ability to assimilate and share innovation is a critical imperative for society's future development. If we are not able to share innovation, each wave of technological innovation will mechanically lead to the exclusion of those most vulnerable, entailing an increase in inequality. Competences can become obsolete. In some cases, machines can replace workers. This can lead to the creation of a new type of jobs. It is not possible to rely only on young people to fill these positions. Their numbers are not sufficient and it is simply not acceptable to banish middle-aged workers from the workforce because their skills are outdated. The answer is continuous training. Human capital is not only an economic value, it is at the center of our philanthropic consideration. Considering human capital as an asset is not a mercantile view of mankind. It is the very foundation of growth and development theories. We need to have faith in individuals' ability to assimilate and embrace change, as our collective future depends on it. Thank you very much for your attention.